Hey everybody, it's Jameson, and I was um, doing a project and I thought, ooh, get the camera out and film this because other people might want to watch. So I have a, um, there's a retreat that I go on on an annual basis and it's uh, to this great lodge. And uh, I wanted to take with me a platter to give to them this year when I go. And so I downloaded their logo from the website and I was going to try to recreate their logo on a platter. Now, logos are tough, or I think logos are tough, and I don't have sandblasting equipment, so that's not an option for me. But what I decided to do was to use some Colors for Earth um, silkscreen medium to uh, put the logo on a sheet of glass before I fire this. And um, the reason I chose, chose silkscreen medium, this is the ultra white. Let's see here, can you see that? The ultra white, it, 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 my understanding, and I haven't actually used this product before, but I've seen it demonstrated a couple of times and it, um, it's just, it's bright white and gives a nice clean look. And so that's what I'm going to try and it's food safe. So I can put it on the top of this platter without capping it and it'll be fine. So what I've done is I've set myself up here. Now, if you have a Cricut machine or a Silhouette or whatever those are called, this might be a little simpler for you. I don't. So I'm showing you the Jameson poor man version. So I printed out the logo, it's on black. Uh, fortunately for me, the logo is straight lines and super simple. So what I've done is uh, I've put my, I've cleaned my glass and then I put a, sh a little piece of contact paper down. I used an X-Acto knife and a straight edge to cut this out and then I picked out the inside. And so this black is what I'm gonna recreate, but in white instead. I've burnished my um, contact paper down really well on the edges and I'm gonna mix up my silk screen and uh, Paula uh, Paula McCoy is the owner of Colors for Earth. Uh, I am fortunate to call Paula a friend and she is so sweet to um, give me uh, tutorials uh, pr privately and so I was able to call her and kind of explain what I was trying to do here and she walked me through how she would approach this project so that's what I'm gonna show you now. So I've put some of the silk screen medium in a cup here and she also has a uh, glass medium GM 300, which is just a, a liquid medium that you put in. And uh, she recommended that I go a little less than 50% on the consistency. So I'm going to put some of this in here, mix it up, see what it looks like, and then uh, maybe add more if I, if I need to. And so let me do that now. I'm just using a cheapo palette knife here to mix this up. Uh, watching Paula's videos, if you if you haven't seen before, so Paula McCoy, Colors for Earth, she does videos on YouTube. In fact, go to my video description on this video and I'll put a link to her videos. She does a lot of videos that are great, uh, very helpful. So I watched one of hers before working on this. I realize that scraping sound might be picking up on camera, but oh well. So she said in one of her videos that she likes to really kind of work that against the side of the container to get all of that powder. And uh, so that's what I'm doing here. Now this is, this is, the silk screen is um, used for silk screens. So if you've got uh, silk screens that you're gonna use, um, this stuff is what you, is what that's initially intended for. But we talked about using it, you know, for my purposes, for my project here, what I'm trying to do. And then uh, what I'm gonna do is flood this in. I'm not painting it in because I don't really want brush strokes. And so she said to, to kind of flood it in, which means I'm just gonna load it up on a brush and kind of drop it into my design here. And then maybe push it to the edges a little bit. And uh, being as liquid as it is, hopefully it'll just kind of level out on its own anyway. This does dry relatively quickly, so I should know fairly soon if this project is going to look good or not. And what I can do is this stuff dries nicely and I can um, just scratch it off and redo the project if I need to. I don't have to, uh, to use up my glass. Okay, I'm dubbing over this portion of the video because I misunderstood Paula. I thought she said if it drips off three times, it's thin enough. What she actually told me was if I get it to drip off within three seconds. So kind of count to three and see if it drips. If so, you're good. I'm going to do just one more little drop, two drops, and mix that in. If you add too much liquid medium here, uh, the way to correct that is just add more powder. So, um, and again, these are all tips that I've picked up watching Paula's excellent YouTube videos. So um, now, 
The great thing about this as well is that I'm just mixing this up in a little uh, food container, a uh, little condiment cup. <clears throat> now I'm putting this on the brush. And uh, when this dries out, it's gonna dry into this container that, that uh, medium's gonna evaporate. Here's an example of some black that I did, uh, silk screening black. Look how, I don't know if you can see that, but uh, it dries out, but that's okay. Uh, it basically can be used again. So I'm gonna put a cap, or you know, you put a cap on this, put a lid on it, and then um, you just add more medium in the future. You can see how it's kind of all crushed up in there. So that's totally uh, worthwhile to use again. And I'm gonna do the same with this white. Okay, so I'm just dotting this on. I want it to follow the pattern without putting brush strokes in it. It does dry relatively quickly. I mean, I've got plenty of time to work with it here, but I guess that's the beauty of the product is that it dries somewhat quickly. Okay, you know me, I show the good, bad, and the ugly. Um, there were a couple of areas where it just, the contact paper, and this is really old contact paper, by the way, but it just wasn't um, laying down flat enough and it started to bubble up and come up off the edge and this medium was working its way underneath. So I've just peeled the whole thing off. I'm reclaiming this medium. I'm gonna go wash my glass. I'm gonna put a new piece of contact paper on and start over and cut this all out again. So sometimes these don't work as intended and that's okay. I just keep uh, trying again and get a lot of practice and learning through the process. So stay with me and I will be back in just a moment. Okay, as you watch me cut this, there's another thought here. The Tecta is kind of textured. So I could have pre-fired the Tecta smooth or actually just pre-fired my entire piece as a full fuse to get a smooth surface that then I would have applied my contact paper to and this probably would have worked better. Okay, so I've re- done my logo. I feel better about the cuts this time. I burnished it down really well. I've mixed up some new medium and so now I'm going to flow this in. Okay, that just didn't work again because um, a couple reasons. I think I had the product still too thick and I applied it too thick and so when I uh, went to peel off my graphic you could see that it um, was dry in some areas and pulled up. Like I got a nice crisp line there, but um, I'm just scratching this off and I'll put it back in my cup and I'm gonna try again. This time I might change up the technique a little bit. It's important to note here, I'm trying to use this product in a way that's not really intended. <laughs> and uh, I'm also just not very good <clears throat> at some of these techniques. So trial and error, trial and error, learning from my mistakes. Here's the beauty of this though. Um, this has all been scratched up off the glass. I'm gonna put it back in my cup and reconstitute it, so no waste. Okay, I tried it three times and I just kept goofing it up. And I, again, I'm sure it was my own uh, user error. It was the contact paper that was old. Um, I was really trying to use a product that wasn't intended to do what I was trying to make it do uh, initially. So. What I did was I just used that silkscreen um, white and just hand painted it on. And I kind of like the look of it just hand painted on. Uh, the lines are not perfectly straight, but I kind of like that organic look. Um, so anyway, I've got uh, some powder now between my two sheets of glass. This is my top piece of Tecta. I'm gonna take this up to a full fuse and fire it. All right, here's the final piece. I'm very happy with this. Uh, I slumped it in the mold, that bullseye streaky glass. I'll, I'll post what uh, kind of glass it was, specifically the part number uh, in the video description, but it's just beautiful. Uh, it's hard to see here in the video. I'm not sure that you'll pick it up at all, but this is a venturine green, so it's got quite a lot of sparkle to it. Uh, I'm pleased with the way the Colors for Earth product worked on this. Uh, I think the logo really pops nicely off of that, and it's still got a, a kind of a nice organic look. I think this is perfect for a lodge in the woods, during the fall when the colors are changing. Very pleased with this. If you like this video, please subscribe for more. Click your notifications and turn those on so that you see videos when they hit. Thanks as always for your support. Drop me a comment. Let me know what you think. Bye-bye.